Simone Biles has defined greatness in gymnastics for a decade, leading the way for Team USA on the competition floor and off. And two years ago, she redefined that greatness when she stepped away from an Olympics that would have been her crowning moment. Tonight, she steps back into the arena for the first time since then, perhaps set to redefine greatness again. And she's surrounded by the rest of this generation's best gymnasts, including Suni Lee, the Tokyo all one round champion in the Olympics, making her return to competition as well. Jade Carey, the reigning Olympic gold medalist on floor exercise, along with Jordan Childs, another Tokyo Olympic medalist. They're all here tonight in suburban Chicago, where the road to next summer's Paris Olympics is about to begin. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2023 Core Hydration Classic. So huge anticipation for tonight, and it is a sellout crowd inside Now Arena. We are in suburban Chicago, Hoffman Estates, and the 2023 edition of this. Yes, they're here to see Simone Biles in the comeback, but also a celebrated field of Olympic champions, world champions, medalists everywhere you look. So here we go, Terry Gannon alongside Sam Peshek, who was part of that 2008 Olympic silver medal for Team USA, world champion as well. You ready? Yep. This should be pretty good. Yep. Oh, Let man, I am ready. Last time we saw Simone Biles compete, it was the Tokyo Olympics. Obviously did not go as planned. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But now the return. This is something, Sam, that many people didn't think they would ever see. Here she is competing again. What do you make of this? Well, it's every athlete's worst nightmare to go to the Olympics and not be able to compete at your best. So for Simone Biles to come back to training after a significant time away says a lot about her mental fortitude. And frankly, it's a huge win for the sport of gymnastics. Not only does she have just as much difficulty, but she's 26 years old. Typically, an athlete's lifespan in this sport ends much sooner. So she's yet again breaking another barrier to show future gymnasts that you can continue at a high level no matter how old you are. And that's not the only positive example she's setting here today. Her coaches said that she's taking her mental training extremely seriously. Seriously. She's going to therapy once a week, and they've already noticed a positive change in her training, and they're expecting it to transfer to the competition here today. And they are ready for it. They've been here for a while. They've been loud throughout, even during warm-ups. Uh, it was at the Tokyo Olympics where most of America, in fact, the world, learned a new word, twisties. With more on that, here's the four-time U.S. all-around champ, John Roethlisberger. John? Thanks, Terry. Yeah, the twisty is a relatively new word in American lexicon, but not a new word in the world of gymnastics. The twisty is a situation where your brain and your body aren't communicating correctly. So when you're doing gymnastics, you get lost in the air. The sporting equivalent would be the yips in golf. But the difference, a golfer might end up with a bogey. A gymnast might end up with a very serious injury. And that's what Simone was going through in 2021. So the two big questions are, does Simone still have the twisties? And how good is she today? Well, well, let's answer the first question. After her tour following the 2021 Olympics, Simone came in the gym and talked to her coaches, and it wasn't about a comeback. She told them, I don't want to be afraid of gymnastics anymore. So she got on the trampoline, and she quickly realized, you know what? I can still flip, and I can still twist. It wasn't an issue. So fast forward to her ultimate decision to make her comeback. When she walked into the gym then, it wasn't about solving the twisties. It was just about getting her gymnastics back. Now, there there are a few skills that Simone's not doing here that she has done in the past. The double-double off bars, a couple that are named for her, the triple-double on floor, and the double-double off balance beam. But her coaches were very clear. That's not because of the twisties. That is a strategic decision. The reward that Simone would get for doing those skills just in her score just isn't worth it. So instead of taking the risk and doing those, they're playing some smart gymnastics. They didn't rule out, however, that she might do those in the future. So how good as Simone? That's the second question, right? Well, let me tell you, from everything that we have seen here, even after two years off of the sport of gymnastics, there is no doubt Simone is doing the best gymnastics in the world. 
John, thanks. And, and you know, she stepped away from the sport to work on her mental health, which Sam was inspiring to many people, too. And obviously, this comeback now also inspirational. Yeah, and she has a lot of younger teammates that train with her directly. You can check them out right there who look to her as a mentor, as a teammate, as a friend. And the positive example she's setting every day is really incredible. So we get underway. Sky Blakely, the 18 year old from Frisco, Texas, made her world championships debut in 2022, helped Team USA to its sixth straight team title, had a chance to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics because, well, she was too young initially, then it was postponed, but had an injury, injured her le left elbow warming up on vault that first day of the U.S. Olympic trials. So here she is, the path to Paris underway an athlete that has a lot of potential. She has a lot of talent. And when I spoke to her, she said she's most excited about this event right here. It's her first time doing both vaults. So we get not one, but two. She's visualizing right now. She always does that before she vaults. Starting with a Yurchenko double full. Does a nice job getting her chest up on the landing. So Sky will be competing in vault, bars, and beam. Three of the four apparatus tonight. And she already qualified for the U.S. Championships. We'll talk more about this, too. But athletes trying to qualify for the U.S. Championships, which are coming up in just a couple of weeks in San Jose. Some already qualified. Others have to hit a certain number tonight. Yeah, the all-around number to hit is a 50.5. And you might be surprised to know, but... Sunisa Lee and Simone Biles are trying to get that score. Simone Biles is doing all four events, but an athlete like Suni Lee is doing two, maybe three events. We'll get into that a little bit later. So in terms of the scoring, you've got the difficulty and the execution, and we'll just try to keep you abreast of what is what there with the numbers. Excellent, the green, good is yellow, below average is red. My guess is that a lot of athletes in this competition are able to get green. That is what their goal is, but they're not going to be at 100%. The high performance team, which consists of three people, Chelsea Memo, Alicia Sacramoni, and Dan Baker, they said it's okay. We want to see them competing with confidence at this stage in the season. By the way, good luck to them picking an Olympic team. Uh oh. Five athletes. I'm glad that's not my job. Here we go. She was a little disappointed because she had enough rotation to get her chest up. It almost looked like she was going for a stuck landing there. So we'll get the score in a moment for Sky Blakely and now set for Simone Biles on uneven bars. Just think about what she's accomplished. Now 26 years of age. Spring, Texas is where she is based, calls that her hometown now. Seven-time Olympic medalist, four of them gold. Five-time world all-around champion. Oh, by the way, seven U.S. all-around titles. There's not enough notes or yeah. paper in the world to write all of Simone Biles' accolades in one place. There's just not. She's incredible. There it is, graphically, up there. I mean, 25 world medals, 19 of those gold, four name skills and code of points. We'll have another one if she does in an international competition on vault. So just a little list, a short list of what she has accomplished. And obviously, her impact for many reasons goes well beyond just those numbers. Yeah, she breaks barriers in this sport beyond the titles, beyond the medals. And I think the way that she always tries to pursue greatness, not just in her skills, but in the way that she carries herself and being a good example, being a good teammate, that is what makes the difference. Now that moment, the return underway.
sweet smile on her face. There was a moment of doubt. And she fell through. You can tell she was like, oh gosh. But the way she was able to fight through that, push up tall through her arms, it's Simone Biles. What can you say? Ron Landy, you, you saw his reaction. Yeah, the routine was going well. Good release moves right here. Nice distance away from the bar. Here's where we saw a little bit of the problem. So let's check out what happened. She gets her toes on. Looks like she just twists a little too early for that full pirouette. But again, that was extremely minimal minimal deduction in comparison <laughs> to what most athletes that make this mistake would happen. Usually you would get somebody that just falls straight over the top, but not Simone. She pulls it back on. Yep, <laughs> there's the reaction. How big is that too to, to get through that opening routine coming back, having a moment like that and then fighting through. Well, I've got to imagine she has a lot of nerves, especially getting back into competition. A lot of fans are in the stands, so I think it's a job well done to finish her routine, but you can tell by her face she's not happy with that, and she expects more of herself. Just in an entirely different situation than anybody else in terms of attention. I mean, you, you come into competition knowing you are the focus of everyone. It's people watching you two days ago. I mean, you arrive in town and then podium training all the little kids who are here competing as well, just taking pictures and watching her every move. The host athletes were here early for their competition, watching her vault, and it was like they were at the Taylor Swift Eras concert, <laughs> watching Simone Biles vault. I mean, I did the same thing, but they were so giddy just getting to watch their idol compete once more because I think there was a, a short period of time where no one was sure if she was ever going to come back to gymnastics. So an even 14 there for the opening routine on uneven bars for Simone. Leanne Wong, the 19-year-old from Overland Park, Kansas, a three-time world medalist, helped the U.S. team last year with a world title to star at the University of Florida. tough to follow Simone Biles, but Leanne Wong has had a lot of experience competing this year at the University of Florida with this NCAA season. So if there's somebody that can handle the pressure, it's her. This is looking really good. Strong execution throughout this routine. There's a lot more skills in this routine than her college routine, which you can't imagine how tough that is to come back from. That's her college coach, Owen Field, there giving her a high five. Two straight second place finishes for the Gators at the NCAA Championships the last two seasons. So the all-around silver medalist and bronze medalist on floor at the 2021 World Championships. We'll wait for the number now. <laughs> That's her Florida head coach, Jenny Rowland, now had a chance to speak with her before the competition about Leanne. And she has listen, I don't try to do much with Leanne. She already came in as a good competitor. But I do think competing in college so much has increased her competition confidence. Meanwhile, on vault a moment ago, the 17-year-old from Omaha, Lexi Zeiss, got in 2023 off to a strong start. She won the all-around at the Winter Cup, one of those lead-up competitions to this and eventually the U.S. Championships. You're going to be seeing a Yurchenko double full. Oh, excuse me, just a one and a half. It looks like she switched gears there. 4-6 for difficulty. Execution, see what it is, 13.3. So as we try to guide you a little bit in that yellow area, which is good. But she's capable of more. You see that difficulty as a 4.6. She can do a double full, which would increase her difficulty score. By the way, Scott Blakely, the numbers 14.1 for the opening vault, 12.65 for the second. So an average of 13.375 for Scott. 
Way down the end, Wong score. What do you think this is like for the other athletes here, too? Because they're not, I mean, these are celebrated gymnasts. 13 7 5 is the number for Leanne Wong. These are people who've medaled at the Olympics, won Olympic gold medals, world championships. I mean, the athletes on this roster here are gymnastics greatness, to put it lightly, okay? So it is a work of art to get to watch them compete. That's why this arena is so packed. And frankly, it's great for athletes like Tiana coming up next on the uneven bars to get to compete among them, learn from them. Tiana Sumanasekara, 15 year old, 15 years of age from Pleasanton, California, part of the Pan American Championships win there. First in the team for the U.S. and in the all around. This is an event that she's hoping to make a lot of improvements. That's a really big reason why she switched to world champion to work with the Rock Lady. It is really tough to fall on your very first scale on any event, but specifically on the uneven bars, because what's going to happen is she has to start her routine over. And if she makes it, unfortunately, she doesn't get to count that score. They're still going to have to count that fall. Every gymnast has certain events they like to start on or close on. You do, yeah. I preferred bars to get it over with. I'm guessing Tiana wishes she started on a different event. But for a younger athlete with not as much experience, this is a really good opportunity to prove herself. When she does have a mistake, can she handle the rest of her team mentally? Lower now, and that's because they're tired. Bar are really long, so you're adding extra skills at the beginning there. But she fought through it. Just emotionally, what that takes out of you too, knowing that you have to start over. Waiting to see Suni Lee with more on her. Here's Zora Stevenson. Terry Suni Lee is competing today through two different types of kidney diseases. She was forced to cut her NCAA season short back in February. She was out of the gym for four months and recently started training again. But the circumstances are tough at times. Medicines are constantly changing, resulting in side effects that leave her hands so swollen they cannot fit into the grips. Nausea will prevent her from competing at practices. All this and the Olympic champion is here at Classics doing what her coach says no one has ever done before. Suni's coach, Jess Graba, says Suni has been so great through an incredibly difficult situation. Graba said, I don't have a better role model than to see someone that has a lot of reason to quit. He called it inspiring to watch Suni in the gym every day. At times, Suni questions why she's putting her body through this, but said, thinking I can help others helps me every single day. Zora, thanks. Yeah, that sophomore year at Auburn stopped short because of the kidney-related illness and condition, medication. Tough to get through that, but here she is, Suni Lee, the Olympic all-around champion. I had a chance to chat with her in warm-up today, and she said, I'm really nervous. She said, I actually might cry after this routine because there was a point that I didn't think this was possible.
that is a determined routine on beam. She said to me, and I, I know I'm not ready. I'm not 100%. I haven't been able to train. I don't have the stamina that I'm going to be there. And part of the reason is still trying to qualify for the U.S. championships, and she's got a couple of events to hit a certain number, 26.4, that is. And if not, she'll go to a third event, which would be barred. So we'll see. Yeah, she knows it's going to be an emotional night for her, too. When I spoke to her head coach, Jess Graybuck, he said, I told her, don't overdo do it. I know she's wanna, she's going to want to go all gangbuster. I don't know about you, Terry, but that looked gangbuster <laughs> to me. But well, we were, we were all talking about the, the qualifying score she had to get and, and what the drama might be if she made a mistake on beam. You know, could she get it? Could we have a situation where the Olympic all-around champion would have to petition to a camp? And I think she just blew that out of the water with that beam routine. Wow, what a veteran move. John, you think about what's on the line just to further your point, too, because if you miss the U.S. championships, the world championships, and everything happens so quickly in an Olympic year, then you're really playing catch-up. You are behind the eight ball, especially that world's before an Olympics. You really put the world on notice and your own country on notice. You can see Suni very emotional at this moment. So big, big moment for her to get through that beam routine. And that's what she told you, Sam. I overheard a conversation between her and her coach, Jess Graba, and she said, what score do I need to get again? And Jess, you could tell, was trying to decide whether to tell her and said, eh, it's not important. You don't need to know that. Just hit your routines the way you need to do them. Just became an overnight star in Tokyo at the Olympics, that all-around gold medal. And, and joining a list, that legacy of great stars from the United States to win the all-around. It's really incredible. She's the first athlete to win the Olympic all-around and compete at the NCAA, NCAA level. You can see she just high-fived Kayla DiCello, who competed at Florida. SUNY was at Auburn. So as an NCAA gymnastics fan, it's really cool to see these athletes from different schools come together, cheer for each other at an event like Classics. And John talked about it different now because athletes able to compete in college come back to the Olympics you always could do that but now the, the rewards from going to the Olympics you're eligible for those the monetary rewards you go to the Olympics and then compete in college 14.5 she'll only need 11.9 on vault she should be able to get that done to qualify for the US championships and I'll tell you what is is really important about that is big picture Big picture, Team USA can get somebody who's good on beam and good on bars. SUNY Lee can fit both of those for a three up, three count scenario. And if you're wondering if she's good enough, she is. Satisfying routine to open up the night here in the Chicagoland area for SUNY Lee. Core Hydration Classic is brought to you by Core Hydration. Core Hydration believes that wellness is whatever works for you. Find your balance, find your core. By the Xfinity 10G Network, the future starts now. By Prevagen and by Angie. Visit Angie.com to connect with skilled professionals for all your home projects. They take on the world at the World Track and Field Championships. Comes your way August 19th through the 27th on NBC, USA, CNBC, and Peacock. This is session two, part of the same competition. Earlier today, Jocelyn Robertson was terrific. 54.05 is the number she's set. So that is the standard for the athletes tonight. John, what do you have? 
Well, Terry, the trend of elite of gymnasts going to compete in college and coming back to elite is continuing to grow. One big reason, NIL. In the past, gymnasts would have, for, have to forego making money off their Olympic medals, like Suni Lee, the Olympic all-around champion. But now they don't have to do that. That's one reason. Just here at these champion, at this classic, there are five big names that just competed in the most recent collegiate season. Kayla DiCello and Leanne Wong were both Florida Gators. Jordan Childs competed for UCLA. Jade Carey at Oregon State. And as I mentioned, Suni Lee, she competed at Auburn. But the one thing that I find interesting is they all have seemed to find it or handling it a different way. You look at Kayla DiCello. She is back with her elite club coach, Kelly Hill, while her teammate, Leanne Wong, has decided to stay at Florida and train with her collegiate coaches. Jordan Childs, like DiCello, is back with her elite coaches at World Champions. Jade Carey decided to also stay at Oregon State, but in a slight different twist, her elite coach and dad, Brian Carey, is now part of the Oregon State coaching staff. Suni Lee, as I mentioned, she was at Auburn, and she was coached by Jeff Graba. Jeff's twin brother, Jess, is Suni's elite coach, and since she went to Auburn, the two have collaborated on her training plans to the point where she even took trips back to Minnesota to get some elite training in, in between collegiate meets. The point is, as his collegiate athletes continue to go back to elite as they're all finding their own way to do it, which I think is really unique. You know, Sam, it wasn't that long ago that you competed elite. And I believe back when you competed it, there was one only only one acceptable way to be an elite gymnast. And that surely has changed now. Yeah, only one way. You're exactly right. So it's great to see that these athletes are coming back to the sport and wanting to stay in, in it longer. Jordan Childs, star at UCLA, a moment ago on uneven bars, getting the evening underway. The 22-year-old, originally from Vancouver, Washington, part of that team silver medal at the Olympics for the Americans, and, and came up big in that effort, too. She's known as a really consistent competitor, but when I spoke to her, she said she doesn't feel like she's at 100% yet. She's only at 70% here. She really wants to increase her competition confidence during her routines, and man, this is looking smooth. You can see her legs are just glued together on all of the release moves. All of her handstands are vertical. Her being at 70 percent, Hans Carey. Yeah, exactly. Not bad indeed. Looks like she's going to take the lead. 13.9, the number for Jordan Childs, who not only went to the Olympics and was close, that may be just short of Simone Biles here. I think Simone's the leader here. Yeah, 13.9, the number for Jordan Childs. So Simone leads after the opening rotation as we continue here in the Chicagoland area. Warm up for the second rotation, second of four here in Hoffman Estates. And it is Simone Biles who leads the way, that even 14, and Long in second. And talk about the standings throughout, Sam, one thing to keep track of, the fact that they only really count the all-around, those involved in the all-around who are doing all four of the events. Tonight. Well, it's no surprise that Simone Biles is in that first place spot, which is interesting because Bars is her lowest scoring yeah. event. Um, and of course, we're hoping to get the crescendo at the end with her legendary vault. She's going to show us here tonight. Over to be next for Simone Biles. Liam Wong as well. Jordan Childs, too, who we saw post a 13.9, but Jordan only going to do bars and beam tonight. She's already qualified for the U.S. Championship. So we continue here. Core Hydration Classic from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Rotation two, just about ready to get underway. A look at the standing. Simone Biles on top of that leaderboard. And Wong, Caitlin Jong rounding out the top three. So Simone will be over on balance beam. You get this second event of the evening. So a terrific number, 14 in the opener for the uneven bars. 
this event, of course, the balance beam is known as the most mental, mentally taxing event. And while she was standing there chalking up, I saw her dancing, moving with her coaches. Cecile Landy was standing there and told me that she looks at photos from the past quad and she can tell how anxious she is versus now she looks so calm, so serene competing. Maturity that Simone has grown from, it sounds like from our coaches, it's been the best thing that could have happened to her. Nice triple series. She was really crooked on that side aerial. You couldn't see it, and there was no deductions or wobbles at the end, but she was able to pull that back on. And then so just an easy tuck full in. We know she's capable of more difficulty, but I'm not sure she could have done that any better, Sherry. Place gets really quiet, and then it gets really loud. It's very cool. It's just a bunch of Simone Biles fans. They're so excited to see her back in competition. It was like that during warm-ups too before the competition even got underway. Mentioned Cecile Landy, and we talked to her a couple of days ago, asked her, does Simone Biles continue to amaze you? She said every single day. Starts off strong with that wolf turn. We saw some problems with that skill in particular for some of the other athletes, but not Simone Biles. Follows it up quickly with that backhand spring layout, layout. This is the only issue I saw. You could see she landed in a pipe position. I'd like to see her vertical, but really minimal deductions and no wobbles at the end. She can add that to the tally of hit routines for Simone Biles. She's got a long list going. Well, and tonight, a different importance attached to it, I think. It, you know, you come back and it's one thing to do it in practice and to feel well prepared, but to do it under the lights in competition is quite another. It's really tough to simulate this environment and knowing what she's coming back from must add another level of pressure, but Again, she's been working with a therapist and she's really been focusing on that mental training to help her compete calm. And her coaches said it really helps her deal with situations in the gym. That time away from competition, she got married. Jonathan Owens, NFL player, signed with the Packers. I'll say that quietly here in Bears territory. <laughs> but. And obviously, not only a leader to her teammates, but they're very important to her, too. You can tell just by watching them in training. She's been focused on training, and I think she really wants to be that positive mentor for these athletes. You can see her talking to her teammates here. She's always cheering them on from the sidelines, and I see them mimic her behavior. How cool is that to get to train with Simone Biles every single day? So we wait for that number and balance beam. Leanne Wong getting set to go. Send it over to Zora right now. Terry, there's gymnast Leanne Wong, student Leanne Wong, and business owner. <laughs> She's selling these hair accessories in all colors, shapes, and sizes out of what she calls a boutique. You can get mini bows, floral bows, college-themed bows. You can get a custom look if you want. There are over 100 different designs on Wong's website. All the bows are handmade with help from her mom. And while at Florida this year, she added shirts and other merch to the picture. She has a press inside her college apartment, and all her free time goes to filling these orders. Team, I've got a little bit of a plug with these bows if you want one. She sold more than like 10,000 or something like that, right? And it got t-shirts now, as Zora said. I just want to know if Zora has a swipe up link for all of us to get these bows. Yeah, right? I'd like to take a poll to see how many of the young gymnasts in the stands are wearing them right now. It's such a clever and creative way for her fans to show support. 
So the number for Simone Biles, how about that? 14.8, Sam. Yeah, I mean, it's not too shabby, Terry. I mean, geez, that difficulty, 6.5. Phenomenal job. So, not that there was a, a large doubt, but that qualifies her for the U.S. Championships, by the way. We Good to know. I was sweating <laughs> I over know. here, wondering if she was going to make the score. Thank you. And underway on balance beam. John mentioned earlier that she's training with her college coaches. They're here with her today. And they said, Leanne is in total control of her training. They just asked her, what are you doing today? What do you need from us? They said the biggest thing is we just have to tell her when to stop sometimes because she always wants to do more numbers. Step back there from that back handspring layout. The biggest deduction I've seen in this routine so far. Even though she's been competing all year long, it's been a shortened routine in comparison to what she's showing now. So she hasn't quite had the numbers that some of the other athletes here have had for their team routines. You can see she fought through that connection and will definitely get credit. numbers under her belt for this beam routine. The endurance, you think about endurance on floor, but you also need endurance on beam to make it through a really jam-packed beam routine. Her parents really successful in the medical field. She's majoring in health, education, and behavior. Said it's a high bar. There's a lot of pressure there. I've got to try to meet that. Leanne Wong. Kayla DiCello, after a floor routine, floor exercise getting underway in this rotation. It took place just a few moments ago. Let's check it out. She's another athlete that John mentioned is coming back from the collegiate world. Competed at NCAAs in April. And the difficulty these athletes are wanting to add for this competition is a lot more than their college routine. So she's hoping to add more upgrades for championships. 19 year old from Boyd's Maryland star at Florida too. Adjustment on floor difficult from college to elite. It's extremely different. They're doing a lot more difficulty in their tumbling. And of course, the artistry rule that's a really big factor in the elite world right now is actually the easy part because these NCAA gymnasts are used to putting on a show a lot more than the elite world. So they actually have an advantage there. Good routine from Kayla, and of course, she mentioned wanting to add a few more upgrades for championships. So the number, Kayla DiCello, 13.15. First two rotations, 26 and change, and that's good enough to qualify her for the upcoming U.S. championships. I'm not sure any of these athletes were worried about getting the qualifying score, but 
you never want to count your chickens before you hatch. It does add a little bit more pressure coming sure. into this competition. No question. Uh, over the balance beam now, Tiana Sumina Sekiro, 15 year old from California. This is her best event, so you're going to be in for a treat here. <laughs> Starting off strong with her series. What she does well is bring that dynamic component from floor into balance beam. jump a little slow on that connection. It'll be interesting to see if the judges actually honor that connection or if they give a deduction there. That's a big goal for a lot of the connections on beam. You don't want to leave anything in question to the judges because the international judges might not be so forgiving. I take it back, these judges will be that forgiving. <laughs> Championships, but also won this on the balance beam there, too. I'm assuming a Sekiro will get the number in a moment. Leanne Wong 12 7 for the effort on balance beam. And now over to uneven bars. And Sky Blakely getting set to go. I'm looking forward to this routine and, and really just watching her overall. I think she's going to have a great year. work there. Difficult release moves to the bottom. This is an event where she added some upgrades, so it's a really good opportunity for her to get competition experience. Despite the fact that she's been dealing with an Achilles issue and not going to do all four events, not planning on that, is already qualified for the U.S. championships. Hugs all around. Yep, confirmation that it was a solid routine. Now to Jordan Childs, the 22-year-old, made the move to Spring, Texas, part of that Laurent and Cecile Landy coaching team. They are at least World Champion Center, along with Simone Biles. Joe's do a dance before you're ready. <laughs> I did not, but uh, we're under great. different leadership. I don't know if that would be allowed. <laughs> I love that they're bringing a little bit more fun into the competition. Of course, in college gymnastics, you see that a lot. And that's really the trickle-down effect that you're seeing from these NCAA athletes coming back to the elite world. Yeah, and they talk about the adjustment, the skills at the elite level being more demanding. Uh, but the atmosphere, I think it, it's helped them. Yeah, it, typically speaking, the elite gymnastics world is very serious and very mundane. I mean, can you blame them? They're doing such difficult skills. You have to be completely focused. But the fact <laughs> oh, is... It could have done without that. It could have gone without there. The fact that they can bring some fun in, dance a little, sing a little. I mean, it's sports, right? This is should be fun. Well, a college event, though, to be fair, the atmosphere in part is because you're supporting your school, right? It, this is individual. Yeah, but no one is more theatrical than Jordan Childs. No I've question. watched her in Elite. I've watched her in college gymnastics. She was hyping the crowd up before Simone did her ball just to get everybody as involved as possible. Says another UCLA group. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> 
Now on balance beam. Here we go. Jordan Chuck. She's an all-around athlete. She's a consistent athlete, but this was her lowest scoring event at the world's team finals. So if there's one event for her to increase her consistency and execution score, this is the one. into a scale and created a new skill. That would have been pretty cool, but it's tough to land on one leg because you're not going to get any extra bonus for that. You can see she needs to settle down a little bit here. This is a new combination for her. Switch leap, switch half. She added that in to increase the difficulty of her routine. to Tokyo. She didn't make any mistakes, it seemed, for event after event. And she knows she's a little behind in her training. Her coaches have said the same thing, so this is going to be a lot of motivation to get back in the gym and be prepared for championships. So Jordan Childs with the beam route. To, oh, are we keeping you up tonight? So <laughs> <laughs> been sensational to this point to come back. Already qualified for the U.S. championships. We've got much more from Simone in this great field here in Chicago. Back with the numbers for Jordan Childs in the balance beam routine. 12.8. What do you think? I thought it was a little shaky. It's not something she's going to be proud of, but I think it's going to be the perfect amount of motivation for her to light that fire in the gym. All right, take you over to floor exercise now, and the 17-year-old from Blue Springs, Missouri, Marissa Neal. Still in high school, graduate next year. separate the assignments for the judges. They're all at the same time looking for all those different areas. They are, and I would have loved to see more expressiveness in her face. That's another category, Terry. So Marissa Neal 
We'll wait on that number here in rotation two. Did you always hear what your coaches told you right after you, or are you just trying to? You hear it, but it kind of goes in one ear out the other. Yeah. You know, you're listening, you're being polite, but you're like, eh, I'm going to save it for in the gym, especially if you do well. If you have a fall or you have a mistake, it's a different story. You look back at routines the, the, to learn from them. I did. I loved why I'm a visual learner. I'm in TV. I love watching it happen and it always helped me do better the next time in the gym. All right, over to the last gymnast in this rotation two in balance beam, Caitlin Jong, the 17 year old from Allen, Texas. The U.S. junior all around champ at this event back in 2021 and Championships as well. She's got some big skills in this beamer team, but the key for her is to settle in and to absorb the beam. What I mean by that is landing with bent knees before she stands up and straightens them. It helps you balance. You can see she stood up right away and didn't quite find her balance before standing up. Double pike. The highlight for me was that big skill at the beginning of her routine, but you can tell she's still gaining that confidence to settle into the beam and make it from start to finish with no wobbles. So the beam routine complete for the U.S. Junior All-Around Champ in 2021. Caitlin Jong. There's you later. Simone Biles on to the next rotation. We continue here, session number two, here inside Now Arena in the Chicagoland area. Don't miss the show where deals and dreams come true. Watch Shark Tank Sunday through Thursday, starting at 8 Eastern on CNBC. On to rotation three, sellout crowd here Inside Now Arena, there are your standings. Yes, that name back to the top. There's the number 28.8 for Simone Biles, Caitlin Jong, and Miller rounding up the top three. Wong DiCello, the top five. So on to floor exercise for Simone Biles. Then it'll be vault. Now I know you're not going to leave, but you got to stick around for Simone Biles on vault. Simone yawning again. She's got floor exercise next and then vault to finish up. Uh, Jordan Childs done for the evening in terms of the competition and uh, successful in her two events. And a moment ago, she talked to Zora. Jordan, just bars and beam for you today. Why were those the two apparatuses you wanted to do? I just wanted to be able to come out here after a college season and just kind of show that I'm still here. First events as well. We were on a call last week and you talked about courage and confidence being two things that you want to work on. How'd you do in that category today? Today, I would say I was very confident, but I still was a little nervous because I forgot how big of an arena and 
in this area is um, compared to college, but I was really proud of myself just being able to come out here and do what I did, knowing that I did just come from a college season. So the courage part was there, but you still still needs a few steps. <laughs> One thing you translated from college though is you're still always dancing. That's not going to change. Why? It's never going to change. I'm always having fun, always dancing. This sport is supposed to be fun. Um, I love getting the crowd involved. I don't know if you saw at the beginning, I was starting a little clap chant. Um, it's, it's cool. It's an interesting sport. We're entertainment, so I want you to enjoy the entertainment. Thank you. No, thank you. I'll tell you what, there's something about Jordan Childs. She has this tiger in her <laughs> and this ability to compete. And she's got dance moves too, but she reminds me a little bit of Chelsea Memel. Chelsea Memel obviously ringside today watching her, but it's like she doesn't have to be in perfect shape. And she'll admit to you that she's not exactly where she wants to be yet. But I saw her come back from a collegiate season last year, and she was unbelievable. And I'll tell you what, don't count her out for the World Championships this fall. Reminds me of you, actually, John. Yeah, you dance like that. <laughs> oh, you You got moves from me, man. All right, Suni Lee on vault needs 11.9 to qualify for nationals. Slight hop back, but could not be more perfect in the air. Beautiful block off the table. That Sam, should be her in, ticket. In terms of expectations, she has far exceeded those, right, tonight? Oh, her health alone is a really tough obstacle to overcome, but then you add in her lack of training and the mental toughness it takes to compete at this level. She's a beast. Check it out. Her arms are straight on the table, her hips are open, and she lands with a completely vertical body. Again, great work from Suni Lee. I mean, nothing she does surprises people. She's the Olympic all-around champ, but with what she's dealing with, the illness right now and how difficult it's been, and training hasn't been able to build up the stamina and really the sharpness to this point, but terrific. And scheduled for three events, but if she qualifies for the U.S. Championships after two, you would think that'd be a 13.5. That's great. Easy. She nailed it, and her coach, Jess Grabo, was right. She didn't need to worry about the scores, and now she's not going to have to push through on this bar routine. See you in San Jose at the National Championship, Suni Lee. So a moment ago, over on floor exercise, Leanne Wong, you know, she's a star at Florida. She said this is the biggest and the toughest transition from college to the elite level, the floor routine. This is a new one. Well, she learned a double layout, which she had never done before, and her very first tumbling pass is a double-double, which she did not do in college. So there's a lot of changes, a lot of upgrades, not to mention the endurance. Check it out. Down off back handspring, double twisting, double back. Wow. That's the new skill that she's been working on. and truly the definition of artistry. Check out her posture, it is unmatched. Does she look like she's in amazing shape? You can't tell at all that 
that was difficult for her. I think she could have added another pass. She probably doesn't want to hear me say that, though. No, probably not. It said it's kind of up in the air what she does next season in terms of college and Florida and training for the Olympics. But she did say, listen, I just love to compete. I'll do it as many times as I can. I'll compete. And of course, those are her college coaches from the University of Florida. And a lot of people are wondering if there was bad blood with her club coaches. Gage, they're actually in the building with other athletes. And Armin A choreographed this routine and then came over from the other side of the gym to give her a huge hug, Jenny a huge hug. It's really a team effort, and you love to see that here. Good number, 13.5. There it is. And of course, that's her club coach, Armine, who took her all the way through world championships, lots of huge competition, special moment for them. So, a solid number on floor exercise for Nan Wong. How about Jade Carey? The Tokyo Olympic gold medalist on floor is going to compete on beam. It's the only event that she'll be competing tonight. We'll see that as we continue from Hoffman Estates. <laughs> Nearing the end of rotation three of four here on the evening. Core Hydration Classic and Kayla DiCello getting set on vault in fifth after the second rotation. Another one of those medalists from the World Championships in this competition, the bronze medalist in the all-around from 2021. She's going to be doing a Yurchenko double pull. She's typically really good. Oh, excuse me. Must have made that change last minute, but she is capable of that double full. I'm expecting we'll see it at championships. She's an athlete that typically has really great execution across the board. And even though she had less difficulty on this vault, we'll still see a high execution score. Alternate for the Olympics in Tokyo and plans to uh, compete for a spot in Paris. <laughs> John getting set over on floor exercise. This is a big event for Caitlin. She's known to have a lot of tricks in this floor team. Double, double. And of course, she was a bit behind in training because she sprained her ankle last year and it kept her out. No problems on that first pass. where you, you can catch a breath and a breather? Yeah, the dance is slower, you're taking a breath, and really with all these no rule, new rules, there's no time for that. You either have to be thinking about looking at the judge or extending your fingers, and it requires a lot more effort. 
committed to Auburn, where she'll begin attending in the fall of 2024. Caitlin Jong, how about the number now for Kayla DeCello on vault? 13.4 with an execution of 9.2. Well, I'm not surprised how strong that execution score is. Of course, the high performance team is looking for above a 9-0 execution on vault. So again, we're going to see her difficulty score increase by the time championship comes. Couple of gymnasts left here in rotation three. Simone Biles still to come on floor, but ready to go on beam. Jade Curry, the Olympic gold medalist on floor back in Tokyo. This is the only event in which she'll compete here. Yeah, funny story about that, Terry. I poked the bear on accident during <laughs> warm up. I asked her, giving her a hard time, why are we only seeing you on one event? And she scowled and just looked at her dad, Brian, and he said, yeah, she's not happy. I didn't think she was ready for bars. And I looked back at her and I said, are you? And she said, I knew that I would hit it. So wow. he's lighting that fire. She's disappointed she's only doing one event tonight. Well, there's Brian, the coach, who's also now an assistant coach at Oregon State, where she is a star. Triple series, another skill after that layout, but she was so crooked, instead of falling, decided not to do it. She's really known as a consistent, solid athlete, and I have to bring to attention that it's sometimes a lot more pressure to only compete one event versus doing the all around. She's been waiting around the entire competition, so she said it's a little bit harder for her too when I spoke to her. Just giving Jade a hard time during Warhouse, but I was giving a hard time for not wearing orange. But Tanya Chaplin, one of her Oregon State coaches, said, We want everyone to know she wore this color because it's the color of Jade. Oh, very nice. Now, over to another one of those moments this crowd here in the Chicago area has been waiting for. Yeah. Simone Biles on floor. Welcome back, Simone Biles. It is so great to see you compete again. Wow. And by the way, you may have picked up a voice 
during that saying, come on, come on. It was Laurent Lynn. He was standing right in front of us, but he was talking her through that the entire way. I mean, she's incredible, but she still needs encouragement, Terry. Come on. I mean, I competed at a high level, and watching her do this sport, it just amazes me. Guys, she was unbelievable, but I got to say, she looks tired. <laughs> she looks like it is early in getting back into routine shape. She was digging deep, but I thought at the end, I go, she's tired. And then she did that double layout, and I go, well, maybe not. <laughs> it looked incredible. I love the fact that you couldn't tell whether she was tired or not. How about this? Huge. And guess what? This is a watered down version of what she's capable of. This pass here, incredible to do that sequence into a double twisting, double back. Such a hard skill. And, you know, we talk about the difficulty and it's the, the difficulty score is the value of the eight most difficult skills done. And it's based on the alphabet. The further you get in the alphabet, the more it's worth. She's got a few H's in here that very few people are able to even do one. And she did multiple. Well, we've been talking about how athletes in this competition, their first pass is a double twisting double back. She has it in the middle of her routine in combination with other skills. Just Nelly, to put it in perspective. Nellie and Ron are parents in attendance. Oh, look at the smile, the pride. You have to wonder if they get tired of watching her just perform that way. And it looks by their faces, they, they don't. It's just like all of us. We'll talk more about it, and, and the evening is not done, and, and who knows, maybe the highlight of the evening is still to come on vault, but there was so much speculation on what kind of shape would Simone Biles be in. Would she be sharp? I mean, I don't think there's any question we got our answer. I was thinking the exact same thing. Anybody that had question marks on if she's taking this comeback seriously, if she's going to be ready, I'm pretty sure by now their jaw is on the floor, and all those questions have been answered. There's no definitive path to Paris for her has not commented on that yet. Coming back to competition, but wow. And 14.9 on floor. She has led throughout. One more to go. The vault still to come for Simone as we continue on to rotation four here. Well, the place is still hopping, and not just because they've got the dance cam going right now. It's because of what Simone Biles just did on floor exercise, and she still has vault to come. There's that lead, 43.7, the total number. Leanne Wong, Amelia Desidori in third, ahead of Jong and DiCello as we could look ahead to this. Yep. <laughs> Simone. On vault when we continue from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Back with a reminder, America's top gymnasts, many who were watching tonight, face off with a national title on the line. The U.S. Gymnastics Championships coming your way August 27th on NBC and Peacock. So three rotations in the books here. The core hydration classic. Yep, there's the leader, Simone Biles, who has not disappointed here in her comeback. Ahead of Leanne Wong, Isidore Jong DiCello rounding out the top four right now as we continue once again. Terry again alongside Sam Peshik. So a thought on what you've seen from Simone Biles and what we're going to see on vault now to finish. It's just incredible. I thought I would see a little bit more uh, nervous mistakes from her, but before her bars, after her bars, she really has been nearly perfect. So it's exactly like the own old Simone, really honing in on those details, visualizing, and I think we're going to experience greatness just shortly. Started on uneven even bar she had that moment that she had to fight through and did so maybe 
Yeah, yeah, the look on her face because she knew it was close and then over to balance beam. She looks so solid here. I mean, no time had passed. It was like there wasn't a crowd in the arena. And of course, she was spectacular on floor, not doing as hard of tumbling passes as she's capable of, but just getting her feet wet. And when I say that, she has the highest score by far on this event. So with vault still to come, I can only tell you during warm-ups, the loudest cheer was when she was warming up on vault. So that's what's ahead. Suni Lee, terrific night of competition, and Zora caught up with her a moment ago. I think it went really well, like better than I thought it was going to go. I did get a little bit emotional after my beam routine because this is the first time in two years that I've done an elite competition and also like a couple months ago I didn't even think I was going to be able to do gymnastics again. So to just come out here and be on the big stage again was just amazing. The other day you told us that one of the reasons why you love this sport is because it challenges you every day. What challenges did you overcome by simply stepping up on the podium and competing? I think I overcame a lot of the doubt today because I did doubt myself a lot and I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I just kind of came out and just let everything go. Tears after the beam routine, but a lot of smiles after that vault. What do you have to smile about as you walk away? Um, I feel like everything. I did so much better than I thought I was, and I feel like it's definitely going to help going into championships. I'm a lot more prepared than I thought I was. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting. I'm super happy to be back. Yeah, you qualified for championships. Exactly what you wanted to do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Really was impressive with what she's had to overcome just to get to this point. Her interviews were emotional. Her beam routine was emotional. I mean, I feel like I'm on this journey with her, and we all are fighting for her. I, I can't wait to see her at championships. So now, Simone heads to vault, and we take a look back at today's Prevagen memorable moment from this event in 2021. It was some moment. It was, and this is really foreshadowing what we're about to see here. Yurchenko double pike for the first time ever. Just a few years ago, she over-rotates it, which means she has too much power for this extremely difficult skill. I saw her stick one in the warm-up. Can you believe that? That was today's Prevagen memorable moment, and that's the moment earlier tonight in warm-ups that I just referenced to. And, and the place just exploded. So now the anticipation, they all know in the building what we're expecting to see. Let's see what happens. And I thought the amount of cameras I saw around the building were a lot on floor, but it doubled now here in Vault. Of course, she has to do this at an international competition in order for it to be named after her, but she is on that journey. Here we go. to the next level, she does. It was better than the first time she competed it, and I didn't even know that was possible. I don't have words to really depict how difficult this vault is. No female athlete has ever done it before. When, I'm gonna say if, but when she competes this internationally, it will be another skill named after her. on the table and look how high she gets off that vault table we talk about the importance of body position when you land and she's adding another flip to her vault and still gets her chest up on the landing i think she was smiling before her feet hit the ground too <laughs> may have been the rot landing was 
tell you, Ron, were incredible stuff. And the build-up to that final event, to, the, to that final apparatus on vault, when everybody in the building knew it was building up to that, and would she be able to do that or not? And she does. I mean, it's an incredibly difficult vault. So the athletes here were watching, judges from other events were watching. As if it matters, but there's the number. Jordan Childs hyping up the crowd again. She wants more for her girl, Simone. Come on, she's making history here. My goodness, what an unbelievable moment. We've seen her do a few of those, Sam. I'll tell you what, the moment I saw her, I said, that's the best one she's ever done. As great as the other ones were, it exploded off the vault table. Let's take another look here at what she is doing so your Chenko style ball round up onto the board and what makes her so great is watch this see where her hands are compared to her feet like she is right in that angle I'm trying I'm so I'm so excited I can't even draw <laughs> look at that angle her feet are still close to the vault board and that is just the speed of getting to the vault table is unbelievably impressive now watch the height she comes off the vault table. Laurent, her coach, almost goes out of the frame. You can't it's, even see the vault table in the frame, John. You don't know that she's on that event. I could do jumping jacks on the vault table, and she'd go right over me. But here she is coming down from about 15 feet in the air and the impact, and that just gives you a great look. It's almost down to her knees into that mat. But I tell you what, unbelievably done. And I just want you guys to chew on this for a second. She's got a 59.1 in the all-around. Round. Does anybody here know what the winning world championship all-around score was in 2022? Well, I'm going to tell you. You do. It was a 56.899. She absolutely obliterated it. And I'll tell you what. At the beginning of the show, I said she's doing the best gymnastics in the world. Well, I'm here to tell you what I wanted to say, because she is the best gymnast in the world. And today, she showed everybody she has not gone anywhere. She is back, and my God, the next 12 months, hold on. All questions answered. Is this an appropriate time to mention that she watered down some of her routines? I don't want to scare people even more about what she's capable of, but she even has upgrades. It's insane. I want to hear your opinion on this, Sam. Going into vault, she had a 3.75 lead over second place, okay? Between second and fifth, there was two tenths separating second and fifth. If you're one of those athletes in second to fifth, working out every day, all year, didn't miss a, didn't miss a week of practice, what are you thinking right now? I think if I'm Simone Biles' team and I'm watching her train every day, I think I'd be a little jealous, you know? You go in there every single day and haven't missed a beat like you said, and you're not Simone yet. Rare air. You're near the city where Air Jordan took shape and took flight. Jordan Child's named after Michael Jordan. It all ties in, Sam. It is. It's a close-knit sports family. Let's just say <laughs> yeah. that. Something else to watch. And we did not know whether we'd get the opportunity to watch it again. And we saw this tonight. And how satisfying for everybody. Simone, her parents, teammates, her coaches, and yes, everybody in attendance here in the Chicagoland area tonight. Technically not over yet, but um, breaking news, Simone's gonna win. Oh, wow, yep. I am yep. shocked. Cecile Landy alongside, evening done competition-wise for Simone Biles. It has been some return to competition. Yeah, I really have appreciated watching their relationship, too. You can tell Cecile really respects all of her therapy sessions, both physically and mentally that she has each week, and she really is bought into the full package. She said it wasn't worth it for her to come back to training if she wasn't going to put the work into her mental training. And I think that's really a great lesson for all coaches to learn. 
Well, a moment ago, Kayla DiCello on uneven bars here in the final rotation of the evening. Here's what took place. I had a chance to ask her what was the easiest part and the hardest part about transitioning from NCAA to elite. She said the easiest part is training with teammates. The hardest part is the increased hours. She went from training 20 hours to 32 hours. The toe pull and mm, didn't wow. quite get enough momentum to finish the twist there on that first element. And like I said at the top of the show, it is so tough to start this routine over. There she goes, but she's now added another skill. So the bar team's gonna be longer than expected. We talk about how tough it is to get your floor endurance, endurance up to competition ready, and it's the same thing for the uneven bars, and it looks like that was the problem here with Kayla's routine. Just not quite enough numbers yet. Well, and, and having to start over, as you mentioned, is yeah. tough, but at the end of the evening, stamina, endurance, got to be tough. 12.2, 6.9 for execution for Kayla DiCello on uneven bars. So we continue here, wrap things up. And this edition of the Core Hydration Classic, it has been some addition. Marks the return to competition for Simone Biles, and it has been something else to watch. The 2023 Core Hydration Classic is brought to you by Core Hydration. Core Hydration believes that wellness is whatever works for you. Find your balance. Find your core. By the Xfinity 10G Network. The future starts now. By Prevagen. And by Angie. Visit Angie.com to connect with skilled professionals for all your home projects. So it is Simone Biles back to the winning ways. So impressive here in Chicago. Look at the number, 59.1. As John said, that is very impressive. Leanne Wong in second. How about Jocelyn Robertson, Nola Matthews from this afternoon, session one, rounding out the top four. I knew their scores were going to hold up. A lot of athletes didn't do all around here in the second session, but what a confidence booster for these young athletes. And we take a look now at today's powerful performance presented by the Xfinity 10G Network. Yeah, it's got to be this. It's huge. There's no other moment of this meet. Jenko so double fight. Dynamic, so powerful. Today's powerful performance, the Xfinity 10G Network gives you a powerful connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The next generation 10G Network only from Xfinity. So we send it over now to Zora. Simone, what was it like just getting back out there today? Yeah, it felt really good, especially after everything that's happened over the past year. So everyone that was cheering, made posters and all of that in the crowd, like it just made my heart melt that they still believe in me. And I got back out here and I did what I was training. So I'm very happy with the result. Why did you decide that a return was right for you? I always kind of knew as soon as everything that happened in Tokyo. So this time I'm doing it for me. I worked a lot on myself and I believe in myself a little bit more. It's just coming back out here and starting those first steps again. Yeah, those first steps on this vault. Can we talk the, first off the execution? How? Yeah. We train it so much, and Laurent and Cecile are amazing coaches, so I can't owe it all to myself. I owe it to my coaches and my teammates who have the same belief in me day in and day out of the gym, so I'm really proud to be representing WCC. Who came up with the celebration dance? Okay, so that's just a joke. I always do it in the gym, and the girls are like, if you land your vault, please do it, and I almost forgot until Jordan reminded me, but it's just something to keep the girls fun, and we could all laugh at and just enjoy each other. 
you mentioned that you noticed all the signs in here. Yesterday, the juniors were in here. I think I saw one girl cry after you said hi. This crowd is sold out. Can you just continue to go in depth on what this does for you, especially given everything you've been through? It means the world because after everything that kind of transpired in Tokyo, and I, I took a lot. I worked on myself a lot. I still do therapy weekly, um, and it's just been so exciting to come out here and have the confidence I had before that, especially after everything that happened, reading those comments, everybody's still celebrating me and like wanting me to do so well. It means the world because I feel like I lost a part of that sometimes. And so to come back out here and to just do what I did tonight and have that support from the fans and everybody watching, I just couldn't thank them enough. What's the status for Paris right now? I gotta ask. We're still in the working steps. Um, my main goal was this and then championship. And then after that, we'll look on to world and then we'll see. But so far, it's heading in the right direction. But I still have to work on myself. I'm still going to do my therapy. I'm going to put myself first. One day at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Zora, thanks. So uh, just kind of catching our breath and, and thinking about this. I mean, it, it's so meaningful. Not to overstate, I don't think you can't overstate it. Sammy, you take in what she went through in Tokyo and then stepped away. And on so many levels, how meaningful this comeback is and, and to watch her do what she did tonight, it means so much to so many people. Even though she finished that incredible vault, I almost saw her do a sigh of relief. Obviously, it was happiness and joy, but you have to imagine it was a sigh of relief. She got ripped the Band-Aid off here in this competition, and I can only expect a lot bigger and better things for her, even though she's won this meet by so many points already. People are going to hang around for a while, I think. If they can get a glimpse of Simone Biles at any point, they are going to. I mean, it was a sellout crowd here. Tickets were tough. They were hard to get, and uh, people were here early to watch her in warm-ups and to compete throughout the evening. And by the way, it had to be Jordan Childs to remind you of the celebration today. Of course. She is the queen of dancing, always bringing the fun. Simone is back. Well, you can catch a recap of tonight's event tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC. And remember, the top U.S. gymnast back in action for the 2023 U.S. Gymnastics Championship, San Jose, August 24th through the 27th on NBC, CNBC, and Peacock. For Sam Tashik, John Roethlisberger, Zora Stevenson, our entire crew, I'm Terry Gannon. What a night it's been here in the Chicago area.